I like very physical performances. You, you know, we get this thing that's called stripper knee. <laughs> And like, you know it's a good night when your knees are like raw and bloody, <laughs> you've, done, you've done your job. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tanya Cheeks, I'm a burlesque dancer and you can ask me anything. There will be blood, there will be guts, there will be fire. <laughs>
and the removal is like they're like you know it's a sandwich that has to be put together properly these are the clothes I usually wear for like in between the performance these are my regular clothes <laughs> for monster inspired things yeah I'm gonna make sort of sci-fi weirdness I have jeans but they have bondage straps on them <laughs> As I was being dragged by a chain and the handler couldn't hear me. <laughs> and no one can hear you scream in a gorilla suit. Weirdest performance you've ever given. My weirdest performance. Okay, I think that my weirdest performance would probably be my parasitical tap dancing parasitical twin act, which involves a tiny pair of like of uh, legs that come between my skirt that match my own legs. It's a, pu a puppetry. It's like a marionette kind of device, and they tap dance to the tune of uh, Scott Joplin's Entertainer. So I think that's probably. One of my more weirder acts. I've also done harbor front in that gorilla suit and I've like fallen over in the gorilla suit as I was being dragged by a chain and the handler couldn't hear me <laughs> and no one can hear you scream in a gorilla suit. <laughs> so I'm like, if I'm going to die now, okay, so be it, I'm dead in a gorilla suit. The audience of course thought me falling and rolling on the floor is part of the performance. So yeah, that was pretty out there. The least glamorous thing. You don't want to see our costumes up close because <laughs> they're really hard to clean. Sometimes we make jokes about like how dirty the you know, the Palmer stockings are because you're walking around a dirty backstage. You know, you picture you know it being one of those lovely like like the Hollywood backstage with the mirror, you know, the mirror with all the lights and the, t the makeup table. So it's not always glamorous at all, and the costumes are very uncomfortable. They can be very hot and restrictive. So. There's that, and like, you know, if it's very hot out, your makeup could run or your hair. So there's lots of conditional things that can make it like not so glamorous, but you know, with burlesque, it's all about smoke and mirrors. So you still have to go out there and, you know, convince them that you're the most glamorous creature alive. <laughs> not that you were swearing and standing in beer sludge at the backstage. <laughs> How do you pump yourself up before a show? It's one shot of tequila, it's de rigueur, or a glass of champagne. I'm gonna laugh at this, but I channel Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I think he's got this certain like loose swagger. <laughs> so I even teach this in my workshop, and I've also like coached young dancers how to channel Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> it's kind of got this like really like loose kind of thing. It's like kind of loosening up your limbs and your voice and stuff, and kind of you know, it's all right, it's all right, all right, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a swagger. <laughs>
I don't often get hecklers. There's sort of like a power exchange where they kind of feel a little bit more like nervous than you are. Like, is it because you're on stage and you're exerting this sort of female energy or however you want to call it? But occasionally you get hecklers. And one of the worst, I was doing the pony act, which the show Pony. It was during like Nuit Blanche at the Gladstone packed house. And the first table was on, um, they're very close to me. It's like mixed gender, very kind of yuppie looking group, men and women. And they were heckling me so audibly, I could hear it all through my performance. And the performance is three minutes and like 40 seconds. It was like the longest, longest like moment of my life. I just wanted to get off stage, but I'm like, I'm a professional. I'm going to like, you know, the, not everyone knows that I've got these hecklers in front of me. I'm still going to give the best possible performance ever, because that's only fair to the audience, because they paid to see it. So when I got up, I quietly got off the stage, I took my bow, went up to their table, grabbed their pitcher of beer off the table, and doused them all, and then walked off. <laughs> there will be blood, there will be guts, there will be fire. <laughs>
You definitely know. I'd give him a bath, of course. <laughs> it's not the first time I clean up some boys. <laughs> Is it all about perfectly placed pasties? Um, not necessarily. Pasties can find themselves in other areas. <laughs> There's also a thing called assholes. <laughs> assholes are when you have a, a, a pasty that's made for your dairy air, and you can spin them. There's also a famous stripper that has like put like tassels on various different places of her body, like her elbows, her knees, her butt, boobs, and get some spinning all at the same time. <laughs> so they can go just about anywhere. <laughs> This is part of my monthly event. I'm one of the organizers, a co-producer. The show Halloween is a combination of tiki culture mixed with Halloween, um, incorporating what's something something that I use called gorelesque, which is taking like elements of horror movies and gore and mixing it with burlesque. So it's kind of like the creep factor is high. So you'll be seeing a lot of ghoulish girls probably acting out sort of visuals from B movies or things like that. So there will be blood. There will be guts, there will be fire. <laughs>Why did you become a burlesque dancer? I became a burlesque dancer because I kept on taking my clothes off in public. <laughs> um, I was also attracted to sort of the theatrical elements and you know the costumes and whatnot. And uh, my grandmother was obsessed with the dancers. She used to go to the when they were at burlesque shows were in nightclubs in the 50s, and she knew all the dancers by names and what their like gimmicks were. And she kind of made me do my own research and like find out who these ladies were and it and watched all these stag reels and stuff and became obsessed with it myself. <laughs> what would the title of your autobiography be? The crust always rises to the top. <laughs> it's a zombie apocalypse. How do you survive? Um, I have a zombie costume where I have eviscerated legs. So it's you know based on like you see like the zombies that are like crawling across like you know the scene or whatever so I would probably just put those on and just fall into the mix <laughs> red lipstick of course <laughs>
And I thought it would be this burlesque career of mine it was not going to be a career at all. It was going to be a flash in the pan, maybe last, if I was lucky, a year. That was going to go out with swing dancing or something like that. Um, so I'm like, okay, well, I was a dominatrix. I love dou double entendres, tan your cheeks, you know, bend over, ladies and de gentlemen, she's going to tan your cheeks. So I thought this is a perfect name, being a, a dominatrix. Um, but I thought, like, no one's going to find out about this because it'll be over and done with before anything happened. 18 years later, I'm still having the name. I'm dreading that, like, phone call or email that's going to be cease and desist. And I finally get that email one day from the director. And he's, I'm like, oh, God, here it is. <laughs> I'm going to have to change my name, all my, like, promo materials. He's like, I'm so, like, you know, honored that you decided to use the name of my character from my film. Can I put you in my... They might, we're re-releasing this to uh, Blu-ray. Can we put you in the like extras? And I'm like, what? Okay, this is unexpected, but great. So I got his blessing. I got to keep the name. <laughs> if you could perform a private burlesque show for three people in history, living or dead, who would you choose? Um, I would choose Marilyn Monroe because I'm greatly influenced by her, and Marie Antoinette. She's one of those like personalities you're not sure what she. I mean, she has a really bad reputation, and I love girls with bad reputations, so I'd love to have her. And I would like to have Frederick Nietzsche because he said, I don't trust a god who can't dance. What do you do for fun? For fun, I like to make costumes. I like to ride my bike. I like to do extreme camping, believe it or not. <laughs> I like, yeah, I like to collect like, tiki, Polynesian, things that were part of like mid-century culture. I like collecting vintage like erotica, like Betty Page type things. Um, anything sparkly, I'm like a magpie, I'm attracted to it. Weird toys, skulls, <laughs> things from horror movies. <laughs> Where do you see yourself in five years? More famous? <laughs> I can see myself doing this, like, you know, still. Because burlesque is interesting because it really doesn't have a time warranty on it. There's still, like, fabulous performers, like the, what we call the legends of burlesque, who are still performing well into their, like, late 70s and still, like, make, you know, they, they challenge what, you know, what people's you know, misconceptions about elderly women are supposed to be doing. They can still go out there and you, see, you might see this, like, frail little old lady backstage, but when they get on there, they give like Mick Jagger a run for their money. So five years, I've got lots more time left. 